Hiya! Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Channel where we keep great radio from the past alive. Today we are going to visit a Chicago legend, Herb Kent, the cool gent. He started on radio in high school in 1944 and was on the air through the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s. He was still on the air and Herb Kent had done all kinds of format. Best known, of course, for soul and R&B radio, but he spent time in rock radio, played new wave, played country western for a while too. He was just a a guy who loved to be on the radio, and Chicago, where he spent most of his career, they loved him too. In the 1960s, he was a civil rights activist, but he spent so much time on the air through the decades, WGES, WBEE. He was on the legendary WVON in Chicago and ended his career at V103. Herb Kent was on the air from 1944 until the day he passed away, literally in 2016. That's over 70 years doing what he loved. Let's check him out. Herb Kent, the cool gent. Herb Kent, go, go! Tower hit free! Bobby Womack and more than I can stand. Herbie Rogers, Kent, uh, I'm uh, eight feet tall. I weigh 132 and a half pounds, very slender, and not really good looking either. But I do play some boss jams. There's no two ways about that. <laughs> so, you know, what you don't have one way, you kind of compensate for it the other way. Oh, wow. W V O N Cicero, everything is everything. Oh, C. Smith says it's the real thing. Coke is. That's the way it should be. Coca Cola. What the world wants to see, oh yeah, is the real thing. Coca Cola, that's the way it is. With a bottle of Coke, and the way it'll stay for the taste of your life. What the world wants today, oh yeah, is the real thing. Coca Cola and Coke. See the W V O N good guys in action. <laughs> Join yours truly, Joe Cobb, along with the fabulous Jean-Met Social Club at Robert's Penthouse, 6630 South King Drive, Saturday from 10 p.m. until, as we present right on in the 70s. I'll see you there. It's the good guys in action. If you smoke, read what it says on your cigarette pack. Caution. Cigarette smoking may be hazardous to your health. you will love the double fresh taste and double smooth chewing goodness of double mint gum that's why we say that chewing double mint doubles the pleasure of everything you do. So remember, double mint adds to your fun. It's fun. Double pleasure all in one. So delicious, great to chew. Treat yourself and your friends too. Tastes so good and lasts so long. Get some soon, you can't go wrong. Double mint adds to your fun. Double mint chewing gum. Instant karma is going to get you if you don't be careful. John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band and uh, Instant Karma is going to get you if you're not careful. Can you dig that? In Chicago, 17 Marshall Commando minutes in front of 8 o'clock. AC Mortimer, and you can't take it away. WVON Cicero, the next 10 minutes brought to you by the Young Cola, the 7 Up Company in Chicago. WVON!
My Way, Brooke Benton. In Chicago, it's 11 Farragut Abril Minutes in front of 8 O'Clock. Here's a like about the age of Unquarius. <laughs> your Uncola Underground. The 7-Up establishment is acknowledged that 7-Up is an Unquarius, born on February 5th. And because this is the age of Unquarius, they've even had to admit the Uncola is going to be unchallenged for the next 2,000 years. But think about this, Undergrounders. In 2,000 years, scientists tell us we're all going to be living on food tablets. Would you enjoy sitting back with a wet, wild glass of 7-Up and a food tablet? Fight for natural foods, undergrounders. Undergrounders don't be unnatural. Drink 7-Up. W-D-O-N. Giant sound of stone. Love on a two-way street. The moment. Love on a two-way street. The moments. Oh, the Ray Lentz now. And I wants to do everything for you. The Ray Lentz and I wants to do everything for you. That's out of sight. Dynamite. Preceding 10 minutes brought to you by the 7-Up Company in Chicago, makers of the Uncola. If you enjoy 7-Up, should you be ungrateful? This is your Uncola Underground. We have to be grateful to the 7-Up establishment because, after all, they make the Uncola. But we'd like them a lot better if they didn't make us go to a supermarket to buy the Uncola. Because supermarkets really aren't great places to hang out, you know. Canned spinach, canned violins. So, we worked out an official underground procedure to handle the supermarket experience. First, stand in front of the cola display, and when someone goes to buy some, sing the 7-Up song at him, good and loud. Next, take two cartons of the Uncola for yourself. One in each hand, so you won't tip over in the checkout line. That was a tip from 7-Up, the Uncola. Number 40 on the list tonight, crying in the streets, George Perkins, WVLN Cicero. It's 8 o'clock in Chicago. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Jim Maloney, WVON News. Chicago. The attorney for the family of 31-year-old Raymond Jones, who died in the course of a police arrest on March 20th, said today that he intended to ask the U.S. Attorney's Office tomorrow to investigate the incident. According to police sources, Jones died in a squad roll after being arrested on the Eisenhower Expressway at Franklin Boulevard by five Maxwell traffic policemen. Homicide Unit Commander Francis Flanagan said that Jones resisted arrest after being pursued for failure to report to the Monroe Street Station to post cash bond for a traffic violation. Chicago. A young man who went to trial for allegedly shooting and wounding a policeman was found guilty of attempted murder and aggravated battery today and was sentenced to serve 20 years in prison. 19-year-old Jerome McMurray was sentenced to serve between 14 and 20 years in prison on the attempted murder conviction and 5 to 10 years for aggravated battery. The sentences are to run concurrently. McMurray of 1505 East Marquette Road was brought to trial for the shooting of 25-year-old gang intelligence unit detective Richard Peck last April. 
Detective Peck was caught in a barrage of shotgun blasts at 62nd Street and Woodlawn Avenue when he stepped into the middle of a gang fight. Judge Saul Epton presided over the trial. Tampa. Dr. Jack Davidson, who was temporarily suspended as superintendent of schools in Manatee County, Florida, is fighting for control of the schools seized by Governor Claude Kirk to block a desegregation decree. A federal judge has ordered the governor to appear in court in Tampa on Friday to show why he should not be held in contempt for interfering, and the judge ordered Davidson be reinstated as superintendent of schools. Dr. Davidson had been suspended as superintendent by Kirk. The governor showed up at the school board offices yesterday before classes began and ordered teachers and pupils to defy court-ordered integration, and they obeyed. North Atlantic, and your barometer needle moves a half an inch in just two hours, you move. It's telling you something, and it's not good news. So you tie it all down and go below, and maybe have a schlitz while you wait it out. Wait it out and hope for tomorrow. You know, you got to take life a day at a time and grab for all the gusto you can, even in the beer you drink. Why settle for less? When you're out of slips, you're out of beer. Slips, Milwaukee and the world. The White House. The House has passed and sent to President Nixon a massive federal school aid bill that authorizes spending more than $24.5 billion during the next three years. The compromise measure expands a wide variety of programs aimed at strengthening elementary and secondary school education. Washington. The Office of Economic Opportunity is trying to shut the door, even though some of the horses appear to have already gotten out of the barn. The agency recently completed a study which revealed several conflict of interest situations in the awarding of OEO contracts. Today, Director Donald Rumsfeld issued a policy which forbids awarding contracts for one year to firms which have former OEO officials in senior positions. Dave Kennedy. A space doctor says two of the uh, Apollo 13 astronauts could come down with German measles by Thursday. This would mean postponement of their Saturday launching to the moon until May 9th. Dr. Charles Berry says blood tests show that Jim Lavelle, Tom Mattingly, and Fred Hayes have a satisfactory immunity, immunity to the disease. But he says in the case of Mattingly and Hayes, this might be misleading. London. Talk about having the heat on you. Imagine the plight of the thief who stole a pair of binoculars from a box at England's Folkestone Races today. They belong to Queen Mother Elizabeth. The WVON temperature, 55 degrees. Jim Maloney, WVON News. Herbert Rogers, Kent, WCON. Libra, this is Temptations and a stroll through your mind. Stroll through your mind, mighty mighty temptations. Take a stroll through your mind. Yeah. 